So in this video, we're gonna be sharing the benefits of service accommodation. So, what are the benefits of service accommodation? Oh, there's plenty of benefits of service accommodation. Um, it's Can you give me the top three then, that you feel are the most uh, beneficial? anyone looking to run service accommodation? Okay, uh, it's pretty much hands off. You can run a service accommodation business with just spending maybe a couple of hours a month on your business. Uh, it's a high cash flow uh, business and you don't necessarily have to own your own property to do service accommodation. Can you tell me about a bit more about the last one? You don't have to own a property? No, you don't. So. Service accommodation is when you have a property that you turn into a really beautiful um, self-catering self accommodation and um, you charge it by the night, much like Booking.com, Airbnb. Uh, but by not owning your own property, you actually rent it from a landlord. Um, yeah, so you pay a monthly rent to the landlord and then you charge it out by the night. So are there any other costs involved to that or is it just the rent you need to pay? Definitely more cost, but it is just like running a home. Um, you do have gas, electricity, water, Wi-Fi, uh, council tax, maybe business rates. So it's either choice between the two. Um, so just like running a house, uh, the additional costs would be that you do have regular cleaners come in and you would need to have a linen company because they'd be providing laundry service for sort of towels and cleaning of the bed linen. So you also mentioned that um, you may only need to work on your business for a couple of hours a month. Yep. Um, so how would you get to that point? Where's, who's running it if you're only putting a couple of hours in a month? It's all down to having a great team. So housekeeping is super, super important. Um, systems in place. So if you have got booking systems like booking.com, Airbnb, then they actually take the bookings for you and can take payment as well. And you'll need um, a team um, that can do maintenance for you. So really, they're uh, just your sort of three major things that you need. So run through that again, you've got your housekeeping team. Housekeeping. Um, obviously maintenance is important because maintenance, you yep. need the right people on board to get it done quickly so that you're not out of action for a while. If you're doing uh, a rent to rent on a property, what are the benefits of running as an SA service accommodation unit over than a normal um, sort of rental on an AST? What's, what are the major benefits? Okay, so um, an AST, uh, which is a short hold tenancy agreement, just make sure I get that right, is when someone is actually moving into that unit, that flat, that house, and they're making it their home. So their intention is that they stay there for at least six months, maybe 12 months or years and years and years. So it is actually their home. They pay all the bills, they'll be there paying um, the council tax. With service accommodation, it is just very short term stays. Um, which you charge by the night to your guests, which is very important, the difference between a tenant and a guest. A tenant making their home, a guest is just there for short term. Um, but the actual cash flow is very, very different. Um, you can be making 10 times more uh, cash flow on service accommodation than you can uh, just as a normal rental unit. And obviously there are other benefits to that as well um, if you need to uh, take back the, the property? Yeah, so as a rental unit you um, have to jump through quite a lot of hoops to uh, remove a tenant. Um, either you have to give notice, give two months notice, um, if the tenant stops paying then you have to go to the courts to get them removed but if it's a guest and it's service accommodation uh, then they have no right to be there and you can actually remove them or get the police involved and they have no right to be in that property so you can just get them out straight away. So if they break the T's and C's, it's a case of thank you very much, cheerio. Yep, so each guest will have a set of T's and C's that they need to sign and adhere to, and if they break those rules that you have set, then yeah, they need to go, and you can force them to, to leave the property. Excellent, so in my mind, then a service accommodation wins every time over a normal uh, AST. But is that area specific? I mean, what, what do you need to know to set up a service accommodation unit over and above putting a normal rental in? 
Okay, so they are two very different beasts. Um, with a uh, service accommodation unit, you need to make sure that you have got uh, your supply of guests. So it needs to be in a popular area. You need to know that there's demand for uh, people to stay in their area, whether it be a holiday destination or whether it be that there's a lot of construction, um, there's a lot of building work going on in that area, like long, long-term projects. And so you're gonna have lots of contractors coming to stay in that area over a long period of time. And is there any benefit in having contractors above holiday makers? We definitely prefer to have contractors over holiday makers. Um, holiday makers expect a lot more because obviously it is their holiday so they want that hint of luxury they don't want it to be like home so their expectation in our experience is much greater contractors are away from home for weeks and sometimes months at a time they are really looking for somewhere that's clean cozy they have access to a fridge, to a telly, to a sofa, and they've got a comfy bed to sleep in. That's all the home comforts that they want. So it's basically creating a home from home for them because it is, in effect, their second home because they're away from their own yep. home for that long. 100%, and if you do it well, you will attract the same contractor back to your unit time and time again. So obviously, booking.com is fantastic for holiday makers, etc., to find the properties. Yep. But how would you target, give me the top two tips to target contractors to fill your service accommodation units. Okay, so not, not a lot of people will actually do this when it comes to service accommodation because they tend to focus on the holiday makers. We focus more on contractors and we really get involved in the local council and looking at what is coming to the area. Um, so my top tip would be to look at the local uh, town plan for your area, for your chosen target area. Um, and actually have a look to see what uh, construction projects, what regeneration projects are going on the area. And then you'll be able to find um, all the the actual companies that are going to be doing those builds so you can then go and target those companies uh, directly and get them on board even before you've got your service accommodation unit so you've got your audience you've got your guests already and then you can go shopping for your unit so how would you target them uh, well you can find their details on the internet google is the most fantastic way to uh, yeah research anything uh, so you can just find them, find the company, uh, find their telephone number and just give them a call or LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really good for that as well. If you've had value from this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below.